Hi, I'm Dr. Sean Allen with the Homunculus Group. You can find us on the web at uh, www.homunculusgroup.com. That's homunculusgroup.com. You can also find us consulting with our friends over at Wanna Get Fast and Slow Guys Speed School. That's W. Uh, it's Wanna, W-A-N-N-A-G-E-T-F-A-S-T dot com. That's with Chris Corfist and Dan Fichter, uh, two of the probably the best trainers in the country, if not uh, anywhere. And uh, we're working with them on some of their athletes and some of our patients in developing some of these DVDs. Uh, on the uh, Wanna Get Fast website, you can find our DVD sets as well as Dan and Chris's. Uh, we've already got a, a seven DVDs out, and uh, we're going to coalesce all of these foot ones into another one here and then into some more clinical uh, applications for athletes and coaches. So look for some new videos for us from there. Um, I'm also partnering with Dr. Ivo Wehrlap uh, out in Dillard, Colorado. We've put together this book, Pedagraph Mapping. You can see one of our YouTube clips on the, uh, how to use the pedagraph. This book tells you how to take that pedagraph and use it. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, rear foot varus formation. Rear foot meaning the calcaneus subtalar joint complex. The rear foot varus formation is a heel that is kind of torqued outwards. That's a rough, you know, verbiage, but normally the foot, <coughs> the rear foot and the forefoot should be on the same plane. The plane being the table, the rear foot and the forefoot are both on the same plane. The tibia is straight up and down and this foot is in a neutral position with nice ar arch formation. Okay, the toes are straight forward. In a rear foot varus formation, the rear foot is twisted outward. So instead of being in this position here, the rear foot is twisted a little further. You can see that this will take the tibia and move it outwards. If the tibia is moved outwards, this being a knee here, this is going to create a bowing or a, uh, a genuverum position. Uh, these are people going to look very bow-legged and, and the knees are going to be far apart, swooping down into here. Uh, we will try and include some videos of some of these uh, athletes uh, in future pod, or, uh, YouTube podcasts here. Um, so the rear foot varus formation, the rear foot is tipped out. This is the most common rear foot uh, positioning. Uh, some of the studies, McPoyle study in 1998, um, which is a, a fairly landmark study, suggested that 98% of the population have a rear foot varus formation. Some of them are flexible, meaning it does have some mobility. Some of them are rigid. Uh, if the rear foot is rigid, it will set up what's called a forefoot valgus positioning. The forefoot valgus will be seen on another YouTube cast, um, and we'll talk about that. But when you watch the forefoot valgus, you need to be thinking of this rear foot varus. You may not want to go back and review these two again. But uh, the rear foot varus position is quite significant. It's found usually when people have a bowed tibia or tibial varum and uh, this positioning sets the foot up for some problems. When the foot strikes it's going to strike very very much laterally. Normally you should strike laterally but in, these, in, in this type of a foot uh, where the heel strike is going to become a little more lateral. What that does is it causes the forefoot to be um, tipped a little bit further into a similar plane. So instead of coming across here and down and across the angle is a little more aggressive. So the forefoot angle is a little more aggressive. What's going to happen is the foot's on, a gr on the ground for a certain period of time. As you come down in a rear foot varus position, you still have to figure out how to get this first ray down. Okay? And what happens is that you're going to have to pronate through the subtalar joint right here very, very quickly in order to get this down because you spent more time outside the plane. So you're going to have to make up for that time by coming through the pronation quicker. There's only a certain amount of time that the foot's on the ground and if you're eating up more time on the outside, you're going to have to speed up time on the inside or accelerate through pronation on the inside. These people can have a forefoot varus formation that will help the pronation come quicker. That's not a helpful thing. Um, when pronation happens faster uh, and more aggressively, uh, it can attenuate the medial long longitudinal arch and splay it out further, causing certain uh, clinical pathologies such as plantar fasciitis, just to name one. Um, when the foot arch splays out in the medial longitudinal arch, that can create some other pathologies, some hammer toes you're going to try and grip to obtain some stability here. Um, so uh, that is your basic r rear foot uh, varus pathology. Um, one of the other problems is that as you progress out of a rear foot varus pathology and you come into the forefoot, you've had to ac accentuate pronation very quickly. Because you've done that quickly and you've gone mo into more pronation to bring the forefoot to the ground, as you come into heel rise, the foot is slower to rotate out of that position into a rigid uh, locked midfoot. So as they come from rear foot 
normally as they come from rear foot, they pronate a little bit, come into forefoot, this is locked. But in this case, uh, with a rear foot varus deformity, they've had to pronate further. As they come forward, they're running out of time to supinate the rear foot again to create a rigid uh, foot mechanism to push off of. So the foot is a little more soggy, typically in a rear foot varus position. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. The foot is not as capable of sustaining heavy forefoot push off pressures without it being a little more soggy and unlocked in this position. Uh, normally we think of the uh, lower leg as being straight, as being ideal. But because 98% or let's just say a significant percentage of, our, of, of the population are rear foot varus, um, we can't say that it's the norm. Uh, this is certainly ideal. The norm, since most of them are rear foot varus, is going to be a little bit more rear foot varus and a little bit more tibial varum. And that's why we see so many people with slightly bowed legs uh, because of the um, predisposing rear foot varus. So again, straight legged is optimal and it's ideal, but it's not the norm. The norm is slightly rear foot varus and slightly tibial varumed. Um, that certainly doesn't bode well for perfect mechanics, but it does if you're someone who fixes these things. So uh, these types of clients, because the rear foot is a little more accentuated into a varus position, the heel strike is going to be a little heavier. These are people going to have a heavier sounding gait when they're walking. Pronation is going to be a little bit more excessive and quick. Um, they're going to need a shoe that is not like this, not like a normal cushion shoe. They're going to have one that has the uh, gray built in, the more of a stability type shoe. Uh, that will help them uh, slow down the pronation as they come into the uh, arch of the shoe. Uh, that increased stability here will help. You can build an orthotic that has a higher arch or a deeper heel cup. Uh, that will help slow down the amount of pronation off of a rear foot varus. These are basically mechanisms of band-aiding the problem. They are not a solution. Um, we believe that orthotics should be a, a therapy device that you put this in initially, kind of like using crutches or an air cast for an ankle sprain, and as they begin to progress out of the uh, injury or out of the pathology, you start to grind down the orthotic. You start to uh, decrease the uh, shoe aggressiveness into a neutral shoe from a stability shoe. In other words, you want to fix the problem. The only way to do that is to ascertain which of the deficits are, are mechanical and muscular that can be remedied, and which of them are anatomic and need to be supported by various postings on an orthotic, which we'll talk about in another DVD. Most clients will um, uh, have, a, uh, as a child between 0 and 18 months, will develop out of most of these uh, torsional deformities. But if they do not, uh, you need to start thinking about some foot uh, uh, mechanic alteration through uh, orthotics or, foot or shoe types. Um, so that is, our, in a nutshell, our basic rear foot varus pathology.